Hi guys, it's MJ and in this video I thought I would share with you guys an idea that I've had for quite a while. Now the idea is regarding a cell phone or a smartphone or a mobile phone or whatever you want to call it. Now phones have been played a big part in my life. Um, reason being is that my dad, um, he used to work at a telecommunication company, uh, the one he worked for is now called Vodafone. And growing up, you know, with your dad working in Vodafone, I always had access to the latest and greater cell phones, whether it was my dad's phone or when I was a little bit older and I got my own phone. So I've always been playing with phones and I've always been coming up with some really cool ideas regarding them. And so in this video, I want to share some of my ideas with you guys. And I know this is bit weird for me to do. I mean, I studied actuarial science. I mean, what do I know about electrical engineering? Well, nothing really. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a different video, but hopefully you guys can enjoy it. So let's say we have our cell phone. This is what most phones look like today. They like, look like they've got this rectangular shape and they've got their little screen and they've got their little button. I don't know. This could be the iPhone 8 or iPhone 9. Um, this is, yeah, maybe a future concept. Now, normally what we do, or what we see happening to cell phones every single year, is we're seeing upgrades, okay? They are saying, oh, there's more RAM, oh, there's a better CPU chip, oh, there's a better graphics card, you know, there's, they're forever upgrading the hardware. And so what's happening is the price is skyrocketing. And I mean, cell phones are basically turning into these super machines nowadays. So my idea is to go in the opposite direction. I say we should take a step back. And what I mean by taking a step back is I almost feel like we should downgrade the hardware. And yes, this will give the big perk of you know reducing the price, but there's method in my mad madness. I say we should, like I say, downgrade the hardware, reduce the CPU, reduce the amount of RAM, um, you know, make, make, this, make this phone less of a computer powerhouse and more of just a simple display that, you know, also is a bit of a touch, touch feature interface. And what I'm saying by that is because the old model, all the workings and all the processing happened inside the phone. I'm now saying, guys, let's, let's harness this thing called the internet, okay, and let's outsource the processing, okay? So let's outsource the processing here, free up the processing there, and then all that happens is that gets sent back to the cell phone as output, so, the phone essentially is a display. Okay, so your phone is a display and all the programming and all that type of stuff is done, call it cloud computing or whatever you want to do. It happens um, outsourced. And this is possible thanks to, you know, the internet or Wi-Fi, um, you know, and as the signal starts to, to you know, cover most areas around town and all that type of thing, we no longer have to worry about having, you know, that little SIM card and connect to the normal telecommunication network. We can almost say, yeah, we don't need SIM cards anymore. All we need is a Wi-Fi compatible uh, device that has a display. It sends instructions, all the computing happens there, and the output is just the display. So the data is not even going to be that intensive type of thing. But my ideas don't end over there, okay? I mean, well, for one thing, this whole cloud computer, should we maybe talk more about that for the meantime, is I'm not saying, oh, we need to go and build, you know, massive server farms, you know, that are dedicated things in Iceland where, you know, all the processing kind of happens. I mean, what we could do is, I don't know if this, this would be feasible, but we could almost go to all the computers in people's houses. And if people have a, you know, a machine that's just lying there that you know, it's not plugged in, 
or their computer that, you know, when they go to sleep, they leave their superpower gaming computer also asleep. Um, what they can do is they can connect this to the system. So almost how Bitcoin mining works. So with Bitcoin mining back in the day, I know they're now using these super farms, so it's probably not the best analogy. But back in the day, it was everybody who had a spare computer, they rented some of that, that hashing power out, and that solved um, you know, the passwords and stuff for Bitcoin, you know, validated the blockchain. What I'm saying is, could we not partition these guys to form our virtual cloud? And then, yeah, maybe you can even pay them in some sort of cryptocurrency. So this outsourcing can even be done by your local, your local community um, and the computers that they have uh, just lying around being idle. But let me, let me continue with my cool ideas. Now, like I said, the internet's a big place, so my apologies if someone has come up with these ideas before. Um, I'm going to share with you guys an, another idea which I thought was really cool, but I did look on the internet and it had come out. So that's why I'm also making this video so that when these ideas finally do emerge, they can be like, hey, that MJ guy was also thinking about this. Okay, on my phone, one piece of hardware that I didn't like initially, but I think is really cool now is this whole finger scanner, okay? I see LG have even made it so that if you swipe on the screen, it can, you know, measure your, your finger scan or your fingerprint. Why I think this is cool is because what I want, well, because my device is just a display, your profile lives somewhere on the cloud, okay? So what happens is if person number A puts their fingerprint on this device, now we're only going to have one device, it goes to the cloud and it accesses their information, their contacts, their apps, their stuff like that. But if they go to the bathroom and person number B comes along and they put their fingerprint on it, then the data that's going to be accessed is from their own account. So the idea is that when you borrow your friend's phone, you're going to see all your photos, all your apps, all your contact details, all your information. So devices no longer have to be private in the sense that you can leave your device at home, go to a restaurant, and a restaurant might have a couple of these devices. You just pick anyone up, put your fingerprint on, and you've accessed your profile. Also, because everything is happening in the cloud, you don't have to download apps, you don't have to do all that downloading and all that heavy processing because it will be handled in this cloud area. So that, I thought, was a really cool feature, is to have this finger scanner so that multiple people can access their own profiles from one device. Like I said, I don't know if that idea exists somewhere on the internet. If it does, please let me know in the comment section below where it is, just so that I can send that person a, a thumbs up or say, hey, I was thinking the same thing. Another idea that I had, which I thought was really, really cool, um, but I did see somewhere that other people had thought of it, was let's say you had a screen, okay? Let's say this is our screen, let's change the color. And our screen almost, let's say, goes, you know, covers the whole edge of the device. And let's say we have a picture of a car, okay? Brilliant picture, you can see I'm such an artist. Okay, let's say you have that picture on your car, your screen goes to the side. What my other idea is, what if the size of your device ooh, were magnetic, okay? So what that means is, if somebody else comes along with another device, so let's see if I can copy this, copy, let's see, paste, ooh, there we go, how cool is that? and they come and they put their device next to your device, then how cool is this? The screen expands. So you have a device, I have a device, we can take the two devices and join them together to create a bigger device. So when you have a bunch of friends over, you can form like, you know, a proper little TV and watch something like that. 
and then whosoever fingerprint, so this is where the fingerprint things will be connected, whosoever fingerprint is, their profile then appears on the screen. But like I said, I did see something similar where people shared the screens, but my idea is that it would be magnetic, so it would actually join in and become like a bigger device. So there we kind of have it. I mean, these are just some of my my ideas. I'm probably going to end the recording of this video and be like, damn, I forgot to mention that other cool idea I had. Um, oh, I mean, I've, I've had lots of like weird ideas, which I see have also been coming in, like having two front uh, facing cameras to try and capture more of a 3D effect. I do see that there are some phones that are, are doing that. So I'm not going to try to say that that's my idea anymore because it is out there. Um, but yeah, that, that is my whole idea is to make the cell phone a display. When we talk about servers, it's kind of like making the cell phone a thin server or, or a thin client compared to say a fat client. So a fat client some of the processing gets done in that uh, workstation, thin client, it all gets outsourced to the big server. And just by having just a display with a cool little fingerprint thingy, we can make these devices cheaper. And because we're removing a lot of that hardware and all that type of stuff, and this is probably the best thing ever, is we get a better battery. Okay, I don't even know how to draw a battery. But the battery on this MJ phone or iPhone 8, iPhone 9 concept, whatever we want to call it, this thing I want it to last for a whole week. So it's really, I mean, especially when you're, you're coming from Africa, where I'm from, you know, when you have power cuts and you go on, like, say, a safari adventure and you don't have, you know, access to electricity for a while, it would be really, really cool if your battery could last more than half a day. So I, I play Minecraft a lot, so my battery drains very quickly. But with this new phone, all my Minecraft processing will be done in the cloud. I will just be seeing the output. So it's almost like the device is the controller and the display, but it's not any of the processing power. That's all done, outsourced. Like I said, it can be in one big supercomputer or can be partitioned out amongst lots and lots of other little computers. And, you know, you can maybe pay them in Bitcoin. Well, that's the whole thing is this will be done via the internet, which means we actually no longer need, don't tell my dad this, but with the phone that's working on just the internet, which we can make calls with WhatsApp and Skype, we can send messages and all that type of stuff there's actually no more need for telecommunication companies. All we need is the internet and we need Wi-Fi everywhere. So vote for a government that will install Wi-Fi and the internet in as many places as possible. But anyway, this was a weird video that I made. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and please provide links if any of these ideas you have seen before. Um, I'd love to go check them out. Cheers.